Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Making headlines this morning, the Department of Public Safety issues a rare blue alert for a man wanted in North Texas. And as more states across the country continue to reopen after hitting COVID vaccination goals, the CDC is now calling the Delta variant a concern. And here at home, we had more scattered showers and thunderstorms last night. Some of them created quite the downpour, some windy conditions, even some small hail. We'll talk to Mike in a sec. Good morning, everybody. It's Wednesday, the 16th of June. Happy Wednesday. Thanks for joining us this morning. And I know we were ha expecting some chances of rain, but boy, was it a surprise when it came down, though. Yeah, it was really pouring in some spots last night. I was actually in Alamo Ranch yesterday evening, and that's when I heard the rumbles of thunder and saw all the lightning. Yes, indeed. And there were some pretty good wind gusts over there on the uh, the west side of town uh, last night. One reported about 62 miles per hour. At one point, I think we had 15,000 people without power. And uh, there were some severe storms once again out to the uh, the west. And now everything is uh, pretty much settled down. May see one or two of them again today. Day. Again, most of us, I heard a lot of rumbling last night, didn't see a drop of rain at my house. Uh, everything is fairly pleasant right now, and there's the uh, leftovers of those storms. There was late last night still a uh, severe storm there in extreme southeastern Uvalde County, but again, that's all moved out, a little clutter around uh, some of the radar sites there. We don't have anything showing up on radar as of right now. 72 degrees, we are actually a notch below the normal low temperature and the humidity is not bad when you step outside. I'm still kind of humid out there, but um, it's tolerable and mold, pigweed and grass are all on the low side this morning is an ozone action day uh, in effect for the metropolitan area, all the surrounding counties and then heading up I 35 in toward Austin today and uh, temperatures about the same as was yesterday, 90 at noon, 95 couple of thunderstorms may pop up here and there later on this afternoon. I think we do the same thing again tomorrow. Then the weekend. Good news, bad news. Temperatures go up. Humidity's going to get a little break from that. Don't get used to it, though. Details on that and a closer look at the Father's Day forecast coming up in just a couple of minutes. Steph, Mark. Thank you, Mike. Your phone may have gone off last night for an alert issued by the Department of Public Safety. That alert asking Texans to be on a lookout for a wanted man. Our Sarah Costa is live downtown with the latest on who they're looking for and what a blue alert means. Sarah, good morning. Good morning, Mark. Yeah, a blue alert, which I'm sure woke a lot of people up last night, is issued by the DPS. And it's for people who have seriously hurt or killed a law enforcement officer and the Texas Department of Public Safety issued a statewide blue alert last night for Royce Edward Wood from Wise County. Now, Wood was last seen on Highway 287 and FM 407 in Rome, Texas, which is just north of Fort Worth. I was issued around 8 o'clock last night. Now, DPS described Wood as a 43-year-old man who is 6 foot 2, weighs 200 pounds, and is bald. Police say Wood was last seen on foot wearing a baseball cap with a camouflage bandana around it, black sunglasses, a vest, green shirt, and shorts. To report any information to the Wise County Sheriff's Office, call 947-627-5971. Again, a blue alert is activated when a violent attack on a law enforcement officer has occurred and a search for the suspect is active. Just head to our website, ksat.com. If you have any information, you can find all of it on our website, ksat.com. Live from downtown, I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Mark and Stephanie. The states continue to reopen after hitting COVID vaccination goals. This as health officials warn about a new variant of the coronavirus spreading in the U.S. ABC's Andrew Dimbert has the latest. Overnight, New York State celebrating a COVID milestone. Fireworks lighting up the night sky in cities across the state. 13 landmarks from Niagara Falls to the Empire State Building shining in blue and gold, the state's colors. Earlier Tuesday, Governor Cuomo announced 70 percent of adults in the state have now received at least their first dose of the vaccine. The governor declaring New Yorkers can, quote, return to life as we know it. What New York has done is extraordinary. We went literally from worst to first. In Washington, plans are now underway for a 4th of July celebration. The National Park Service says the fireworks show will return to the National Mall. And on the 4th, the White House says President Biden will host first responders and service members on the South Lawn, where more than 1,000 guests are expected. 
Getting back to normal is so important to all of us, mentally, physically, it's what a joyous day. The celebrations come even as health officials warn about a new variant of the coronavirus spreading in the U.S. The CDC now officially declaring the Delta variant, first seen in India, a variant of concern. It's more contagious, but the vaccines do appear to be effective against it. Still, doctors say it's important to monitor how the variant spreads among children under 12 who are not yet eligible for the vaccine. It's likely going to be the dominant variant in just a few short months. Parents and their children should continue to follow the CDC guidelines and their own local public health department guidelines. Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, New York. Israeli warplanes continued to bombard the neighboring Gaza Strip last night, a day after carrying out the deadliest single attack there in the latest outbreak of violence between Israel's military and Hamas. Officials say at least 42 people in Gaza City were killed by Israeli airstrikes early Sunday. The attack leveled buildings and targeted roads leading to a hospital, preventing ambulances from reaching the wounded. According to ABC News, in total, 212 people, including 61 children, and 36 women have died in the Gaza Strip since tensions escalated last week. President Joe Biden and Russian President Vladimir Putin will meet for a summit in Geneva, Switzerland today. The U.S.-Russian talks will take place at a lakeside villa. According to a U.S. official, the talks are expected to last at least four to five hours. The two leaders not planning on sharing any meals together, and they will not hold a joint news conference. Instead, President Biden and Putin will hold solo press conferences after the talks have concluded. Former President Donald Trump says he will be visiting part of the southern border later this month. In a statement, Trump said he was invited by Governor Greg Abbott. Trump continues to blast the Biden administration's response to the border situation, calling it, quote, an unmitigated disaster zone. End quote. The visit is scheduled for June 30th. U.S. Senate has unanimously passed a bill to establish Juneteenth as a federal holiday. Still needs to pass the House before going to President Biden's desk. The bill designates June 19th, 2021 as Juneteenth Independence Day. It's a recognition of June 19th, 1865, the date on which the news of the end of slavery reached slaves in the southwestern states, including Texas. Comes after Senator Ron Johnson, a Republican from Wisconsin, announced he would no longer object to the measure moving forward. Any one senator can block the passage of the measure by what's called unanimous consent. And time now is 437 and we're at about 72 degrees right now. Not a big fan of the hot weather, then you might need a big fan. Still ahead, we're checking out which ceiling fans can help cool your home the most efficiently. Also up next, another franchise looking to possibly hire San Antonio Spurs assistant coach Becky Hammond. Plus, we'll check out some San Antonio Missions baseball. Love that. Outside with live cam. It's actually a fairly pleasant mid-June morning as we look back to the skyline of the Alamo City. We're just getting started here on GMSA. More to come. 4.40, time for a look at morning sports. How about some Missions baseball? Following an hour-long rain delay last night, Missions looking to extend their win streak to five games. Northwest Arkansas Naturals took the lead in the third, but in the fourth, Missions regained the lead with an RBI single to score. Jack Sawinski added an insurance run, bottom of the sixth for his 11th homer of the season. This is his third straight game with a home run. Missions win at 5-3. The series continues tonight, 7.05, out at the Wolf. San Antonio Spurs assistant coach Becky Hammond already slated to interview for the vacant head coaching job in Portland this week. She's also on the short list of candidates for the job in Orlando. And now Boston fans would like to see her on their list for the Celtics head coaching job. It's after Brad Stevens moved up to the front office to take over as president of the team after Danny Ainge announced his retirement. How do we know this? Because someone put up a billboard outside uh, the arena asking Stevens to do just that. Hire Becky or former Celtics assistant Carol Lawson. Hammond played 16 years in the WNBA before she became a Spurs assistant in 2014. Lawson played 13 years in the WNBA before becoming the first female Celtics assistant back in 2019. And she's now the head coach for the Duke women's team. There it is. It's time to shake it up. Hire Kara or Becky. I love the billboard. It's good. Good way to get someone's attention. I think your microphone's off right oh, now. Okay, 442, about 72 degrees. It can be tough to keep your home cool as the summer heats up. Next, we'll take a look at which ceiling fans work the best. And also
That's why the ex-wife of Amazon CEO Jeff Bezos is continuing her promise to give away her fortune. And welcome back. It's about 4.45. Mackenzie Scott, ex-wife of Amazon CEO Jeff Bezos, is continuing her promise to give away her fortune. Scott and her new husband have donated over $2 billion to various organizations. ABC's Rebecca Jarvis has the details in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, billion dollar donation. The ex-wife of Amazon founder Jeff Bezos announcing she and new husband, science teacher Dan Jewett, have donated nearly $3 billion to 286 organizations, including those focused on the arts, education, and combating racial injustice. Nonprofit Native Americans in Philanthropy received $2 million. It's pretty rare to just write a check and believe in the organizations, and that's that's what they did. Mackenzie Scott writing in a blog post that her goal was to de-emphasize privileged voices and cede focus to others, and that it would be better if disproportionate wealth were not concentrated in a small number of hands. And we'll have much more on this multi-billion dollar donation coming up at 7 a.m. With your GMA First Look, I'm Rebecca Jarvis, ABC News, New York. Well, as you know by now, ERCOT, the operator of the Texas Electricity Grid, continues to ask all of us to try to conserve power this week. And if you're a big fan of saving money and power, maybe you just need a big fan. 12 on your side's Marilyn Morris tells us which ceiling fans can help. One of the simplest ways to help beat the heat may be right over your head. To keep her home comfortable, Paula Machado relies on three ceiling fans, plus a little air conditioning. We have the ceiling fans on all day long on the entire house to help it cool off. And it's important because one, it saves our electric bill somewhat, and two, it really helps extend the life of our AC. Ceiling fans cost very little to run, and when used with your AC, you can actually raise the thermostat by about four degrees and feel just as cool. When buying, look for the Energy Star label. They're 60% more efficient than others. To optimize your fan power, place it at the right height with the blades eight to nine feet above the floor. If you have really high ceilings, use a down rod to bring the fan to the right height. The most popular fan size is 52 inches. They're best for large rooms from 225 to 400 square feet. A 42 to 44 inch fan is effective in rooms from 144 to 225 square feet. When it's time to install, if you're replacing a light fixture with a ceiling fan, be sure the electric box can support the weight. During the summer months, remember to spin your blades in a counterclockwise direction. That creates the cool draft. And remember, fans cool people. They do not change the temperature of the room. So turn them off when you leave. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. See, I forget that part. I keep thinking I it's a group effort <laughs> <laughs> and that I want all the fans on even when I'm not home. I know. I forget that, too, especially if they're not going that fast. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just kind of subtle and, yeah, I'm guilty also. Well, tis the season, Mike. Again, we enjoyed that, that lovely spring weather that's now come to an end, the pattern of cooler temperatures and intermittent rain off and on. Yes, indeed. And uh, yeah, the past couple of days with those storms that have popped up, they've uh, in places been very, very strong. Case in point, this was uh, just over there right around uh, Leon Valley area and kind of on the west northwest side of town. And that's pretty big old tree limb that got knocked down. There were some uh, wind gusts there had some downbursts. It looks like that. Uh, that's what folks were talking about last night and uh, that produced wind gusts about 60 65 miles per hour and that's what did some of that damage and a lot of power outages as well. Things have definitely settled down around here this morning and the humidity is also not bad. Now, later on today, we are going to see humidity drop down, uh, which is going to be pleasant. We'll still have somewhat of a heat index to deal with, but it's not going to be quite as high as the past couple of days. Humidity will come back up again tomorrow morning. We do the same thing again in the afternoon. And then even going into the weekend, it looks like we will see uh, more of a break in the humidity 
temporarily. Don't get used to it because it is summer around here. So heat index readings later on today. Yeah, it's still going to be hot upper 90s, but down a few degrees from where they have been the past uh, couple of days. As far as the computer model and once again, this model does have one or two showers or storms kind of popping up around the area to pinpoint. It is a little bit difficult in this situation, but again, one or two of them and if one or two decide to uh, get going, they could produce some heavy downpours could produce some strong winds and it looks like same situation around here tomorrow afternoon. Just one or two sort of scattered about the area. Most of us unfortunately won't be seeing any rain from this. Now, as we go on into the next uh, few days and, and the weekend, we are going to get more of a break in the humidity and uh, dew points should be dropping down. So it'll be a bit more pleasant. That in turn, though, is going to allow temperatures to heat up because the dry air heats up more easily than moist air does. So we are going to see temperatures start to creep up. We've been at 95, 96, hit 95 again yesterday. And then we're going to go up into the upper 90s as we go on into the week and uh, the weekend and then notice how the first part of the week yeah we got a lot more humidity that's going to be hanging around here here's the satellite picture going back 12 hours and you can see those storms that blew up on the north and northwest side of town and then continued on in toward uvalde county and there were some severe storms late last night around there still watching this system down here which really doesn't look like a heck of a lot but hurricane center is uh, much more uh, positive about the fact that this will become a tropical depression within the next few days, but the path is still going to take it to the east of us, although maybe nudging in a little bit closer, so it could actually throw a, a shower or two around the area by Saturday 90 at noon today. Mostly sunny skies we will start off with more clear skies and then have a few more of those clouds developing. A couple of storms can't be ruled out again today. One or two scattered about 95 high temperature. Same thing tomorrow then. Settles down on Friday, Saturday again, maybe a shower, especially to the east, kind of getting wrapped in here from that system out there in the, uh, the Gulf of Mexico. That's going to be a huge rain producer over around uh, Louisiana, mm -hmm. Mississippi, Alabama uh, for us. No, we'll be kind of on the uh, the sinking side of it, helping out with that drier air. But uh, then it heats back up into next week. And Sunday is um... the first day of summer and then, summer begins and. Then... and Father's, yes. Father's Day. I was waiting for you to Father's. say. <laughs> yeah, you're, that's your job. You're, you're, you're leading the charge. And why, reminding why, everyone. Why should we have to talk about our own holiday? Oh, well, I know, but some true. people. But, but the cards are picked over, a lot of gifts. Mm -hmm. I saw HEB, Alamo Ranch had this end cap, and it was cool, all sorts of cool stuff like, you know, men's soaps and shave stuff. All and, gone. You know, mugs and no stuff that was oh, like ready to oh, go. Okay. So if you're still looking for gift ideas, Good. maybe well, hit up your yeah. local HEB. Do you notice how his voice changed when he's men's yeah. soaps? <laughs> Yeah, we could, you want to make it like those yeah. big bricks that are, that's like Lone Star beer infused. Yeah. Well, that that makes it okay because you know you don't want to get like you know just don't eat a or different drink. kind of soap. Don't eat or drink the and, soap. And you get pulled Adventurous over, and the officer says, "Why do you smell like beer?" It's my <laughs> oh soap. no, <laughs> that would be terrible. It's the bar soap officer. I oh, <laughs> four fifty two, so about seventy two so degrees. Oh my goodness! And you look at the tale as old as time. The world of beauty and the beast is becoming a mini series. We're going to show you what's in the spotlight after the break. The FX Network's Most Watched Comedy is getting a second season, plus Disney continues their prequels on famous movie villains. For the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. Uh, you ever pass each other out? What have little Dicky and his friends been up to the past year? Season two of the hit FXX comedy, Dave, premieres tonight, and co-star Gata tells me he feels blessed, especially after last year's impactful episode in which he revealed his own real-life struggle with bipolar disorder. I'm getting called upon daily. It's kind of like I turned into an overnight mental health advocate, you know, and it, it feels good, you know, just to be able to speak, use my platform for something positive. Dave is the FX Network's most wanted comedy with episodes available the next day on Hulu. Also today, it's the season finale of The Handmaid's Tale, season four, wrapping up with episode 10 titled The Wilderness. How lovely to make your acquaintance. The world of Beauty and the Beast becoming a miniseries. Josh Gad will reprise his role as LeFou and Luke Evans as Gaston in the Disney Plus series, which we're told will be an eight episode prequel to the 2017 movie. We'll start filming next year. And happy birthday to Oscar nominee and Emmy-winning actress Lori Metcalf. She's 66 today. While Star Trek and Harold and Kumar star John Cho is 49. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Athenson, ABC News, Los Angeles. 
and time now is 456 and it's about 72 degrees out there. Still ahead today on GMSA, a preview of the big summit happening later on today between Russian President Vladimir Putin and the President of the United States, Joe Biden. Plus a new kind of picture frame that is also a speaker. We're going to tell you how much it costs and where you can get one coming up in Tech Bites. Building sand castles, the beach can be tons of fun, but did you notice they could pose a threat to sea life like turtles? Ahead on GMSA at 6, why experts say sand castles can be dangerous for animals if they're not destroyed before leaving the beach. And a quick look out with Trans Guide. There's an incident there at I-10 and Frio. We will be checking in with our Stephen Cavazos after the break. Live from KSAT 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. DPS is looking for a man who seriously hurt or killed a law enforcement officer. Good morning, I'm Sarah Acosta. In just a bit, the description of that suspect. President Biden and President Vladimir Putin sit down for their high stakes one on one meeting. I'm Mike Ajachi reporting in Washington. Coming up, what to expect from the summit. And outside with live cam, it's calm right now. We had strong to severe storms in the area again last night, triggered about 14 to 15,000 uh, power outages. But this morning, we're back down below 500. Good morning. It is now. What's Wednesday, Wednesday, right? Wednesday, June 16th. Yes, thanks for joining us. We made it to the middle of the week, yay! And uh, I was lucky we, we had our power, but I know some of my friends lost power mm -hmm. throughout the night. I knew we had storms in the area last mm -hmm. night, Mike, but the, those winds shook the house for about 15 minutes. Yeah, there were some wind gusts reported by folks over on the uh, west-northwest side of town, about to 60 to 65 miles per hour did some damage. Um, some of the causes, I'm sure, for some of those power outages, a lot of tree limbs down and uh, things like But like you said, things have really settle down right now. We may see a few of those thunderstorms again later on this afternoon. We are at 71. We've actually dropped down another degree in the past hour and the dew point at 67. That bottom number that's not bad, especially this time of year and we're two degrees below normal right now, so it's Open up the front door, not too bad. 95 for a high temperature later on today. And yeah, there's that 20% uh, chance. Another couple of thunderstorms, uh, showers going to be popping up. Very, you know, scattered about here and there type situation. But if you do get one of them, they could have some pretty hefty downpours and a pretty good light show. The aquifer dropped out a little more than a foot in the past 24 hours. And the allergens, everything is on the low side. Mold, pigweed, and grass. Here's what it looks like as far as the humidity right now. And again, dew points, yeah get below 70 that's fairly comfortable i don't know if that's an error reading up there in comfort but uh, it's coming in at 51 definitely a possibility still at 70 in canyon lake but this area is, is not too bad we are going to be seeing especially afternoon dew point temperatures a little bit lower so not quite the uh, intense heat index in later on in the afternoon and that's going to be the situation especially going in toward the weekend more on that in a moment also ozone action day is in effect for all of the metropolitan area and going up in toward austin throughout the uh, afternoon clear and uh, fairly pleasant this morning then again we will see one or two of those storms popping up later on this afternoon very few and far between pretty much more of the same again tomorrow and then going into the weekend temperature is going to start to go up a little bit a little bit lower humidity so kind of a give and take type situation slightly more comfortable in the uh, the shade but uh, don't get used to that details coming up in just a couple of minutes traffic authority Stephen Cavazos good morning sir anything going on hey good morning Mike well just a few slowdowns and delays that we've already spotted for this Wednesday let's go ahead and take a look at this one that's happening here at I-10 at Frio you can see that we actually have an 18 wheeler actually two there uh, that just popped up there uh, that looks like they're having some trouble right now out on the roads uh, but thankfully it looks like some folks are assisting them right now uh, taking a look here at the map it does look like that's right in these westbound lanes of I-10 right Right at North Frio, our friends at Transguide just popped up that image for us. Uh, right now, not causing too many issues or delays for drivers, but somewhere where we have spotted uh, some delays is right over here off Southwest Military at Old Pierce. Now, there was a crash that was reported there. Thankfully, it has since cleared. We're not seeing it on the tech stop pages anymore. However, traffic has slowed down to a little bit 
uh, around 36 miles per hour. So that should be improving as the morning does pick up. But again, no major issues right now. Let's take a look here at our inbound times. If you're coming into the downtown San Antonio area now over here from New Braunfels at 35, we're seeing some a uh, little bit of yellow and orange there. There has been some construction that we've talked about a few times here on GMSA. Nothing too big right now, but about a 29 minute commute time to the downtown San Antonio area on I-35 South. And if you're coming from 281 from New Bulverde, we're looking at 26 minutes and over here in Bernie, we're looking at 24 minutes to downtown San Antonio. So thankfully, no major issues right now. But let's bring it back here to Transguide at I-10 at Frio. You can see that we still have some folks out there helping uh, these drivers with their uh, whatever it's going on there. But we'll be monitoring that throughout the morning. And be sure to give these guys plenty of room. Mark Seff. Thank you, Stephen. Texans phones were buzzing last night after a blue alert was pushed out across the state. The Department of Public Safety searching for a wanted man. Sarah Costa is live downtown with a description of who they're looking for. Good morning, Sarah. Good morning, Mark and Stephanie. Yeah, that wanted man was last seen in Rome, Texas. That is just north of Fort Worth. The Department of Public Safety issuing that blue alert across the state for Royce Edward Wood last night out of Wise County. Wood was last seen on Highway 287 and FM 407 in Rome, Texas at around 8 o'clock last night. According to DPS, descri they describe him as a 43-year-old man who is Six foot two, weighs 200 pounds, and is bald. Police say Wood was last seen on foot wearing a baseball cap with a camouflage bandana around it, black sunglasses, a vest, green shirt, and shorts. Now, if you have any information, you are urged to call the Wise County Sheriff's Office. That number, 940 627 5971. Now, blue alerts, they are rare. They are pushed out by the Department of Public Safety when there is an active search for someone who is either seriously hurt or killed a law enforcement officer. Live from downtown, I'm Sarah Acosta, KSAT 12 News. Mark and Stephanie. Sarah, thank you. Now onto the high stakes showdown between President Biden and Russian President Vladimir Putin. This morning, there is new details about the preparations and the plans for the summit. ABC's Ike Jachi is in Washington with the latest. President Biden leaving Air Force One and meeting the Swiss president in Geneva ahead of his one-on-one -on -one sit down with Vladimir Putin. The meeting is expected to last four to five hours. First President Biden and Vladimir Putin, plus Secretary of State Antony Blinken and his Russian counterpart. Then senior aides will be brought in. I'm gonna make clear to President Putin that there are areas where we can't cooperate, if he chooses. Sources telling ABC News Biden has been preparing for weeks, receiving briefings at least once a day. One of those advising the president, Russia expert Fiona Hill, telling CNN. These are both going to be very experienced people who are going to be sitting down here. She served in the Trump administration and testified in the impeachment trial. Hill says President Biden is entering this meeting not looking to make a spectacle, something she says Trump did when he publicly sided with Putin over his own intelligence community as it related to 2016 Russia. Russia election meddling. But it was the press conference itself and the way that President Trump unfortunately handled himself, which was, you know, the worst moment of all. I think it's a great idea not to have a joint press conference. This is not a contest about who can do better in front of a press conference or try to embarrass each other. It's about making myself very clear what the conditions are to get a better relationship are with Russia. Topics during their talks will include Putin's election meddling, human rights, and cyber attacks, including one that threatened to disrupt the U.S. meat supply and another that triggered gas shortages and price hikes along the East Coast. Ahead of their meeting, both men did show respect for each other publicly, Biden labeling Putin a worthy adversary. Ike Ajachi, ABC News, Washington. Back to local news, a family of a woman who died while trying to save children from drowning in the Guadalupe River near Seguin is hoping her story encourages awareness and safety for other families. Guadalupe County Sheriff's Office says Cassandra Kendrick and her family stepped in to help a father, Victor Villanueva, save his three children from a strong current near the FM 1117 bridge. Sadly, after Kendrick passed, the last child off to her family, she went under with Villanueva. The family, of course, is devastated, but her bravery is inspiring them to keep going. I feel that strength. I do not believe she's left us. And she was so strong. Yeah, I can still feel her spirit move through us as we... 
Kendrick went by the nickname CJ and she was honorably discharged from the U.S. Air Force. The family is now raising money for funeral expenses. You can find out how to help on our website at ksat.com. And time now is 509 and it's about 71 degrees right now. Still have Amazon bringing its cashierless tech to a full size grocery store for the first time. Also next, how a couple of college students are doing their best to help tackle mental health issues in a fun way. And outside with live cam, we're going to check back in with Mike and Steven Cavazos is back after taking some time off. It's good to have him back in the studio this morning. We'll be right back. Five twelve. as we move out of the pandemic, we are seeing consequences in the form of mental health issues in younger people. Ursula Perry tells us about how some college students are trying to help by creating a mental health check. College campuses are a new type of hotbed these days, a place where mental health issues are on the rise. And friends Jude Pilat and Jack Cornett are trying to help. They created a gamified app called WellNest. Its goal, to tackle mental health issues through mindfulness in a fun way. So we think that if we can make mindfulness more fun and engaging, that it will help people actually start doing it so that they can start working on their mental health like they do their physical health. The two work with cognitive scientists to evolve the app's features. There are things like a mood check, a daily conversation, and voice journaling. Today I'm feeling a little anxious. User Mac Riallo opens it almost daily. I struggle with mental health on my own daily basis, and there are times that I even struggle with expressing it to other people. So wellness offers me the space to be able to reflect and share my thoughts and emotions. According to Inside Higher Ed, three in five students are worried about their mental health and six in 10 who sought help said it was difficult to find it. The creators say Wellness fills that void as it is simple to open like any other app on YouTube, Netflix and TikTok. These people um, who, you know, might be struggling with just day to day things that everyone struggles with. Uh, our app has been able to make a big improvement in their life, make them feel better about things. Downloading the app is free and it's going to continue to evolve because the makers are also teaming up with psychologists as well as video game makers to keep it growing. Ursula Perry for Good Morning San Antonio. 514 about 71 degrees and coming up next we're going to tell you about a new picture frame speaker that lets you hang your tunes on a wall from prom dresses to workouts and new adventures you hope the more you give the less they'll miss but even if your teen was vaccinated against meningitis in the past they may be missing vaccination for meningitis b Although uncommon, up to one in five survivors of meningitis will have long-term consequences. Now, as you're thinking about all the vaccines your teen might need, make sure you ask your doctor if your teen is missing meningitis B vaccination. Eric. Our essential mist transforms fragrance infused with natural essential oils into a mist to awaken your home with an experience you can see, smell, and feel. It's air care redefined. Airwick Essential Mist, connect to nature. My cholesterol is borderline. I figure I can worry about it or do something about it. Garlic helps maintain healthy cholesterol safely and naturally. It's odor and taste free with guaranteed potency. I'm taking charge of my cholesterol with garlic. In today's Tech Bytes, Amazon is taking its cashierless approach to a bigger stage. This week, the technology will be used in a full-size grocery store for the first time in Washington State. Customers simply get what they want, they walk out of the store, and whatever they grab is charged to their Amazon account. Apple has launched a store for individual podcast subscriptions. You can now subscribe to your favorite shows from major brands like news organizations or individual creators. Subscriptions start at 49 cents per month, allowing you to pay for perks like ad-free listening. And finally, the picture frame that doubles as a speaker. It's the newest product from Ikea and Sonos. The frame part can be customized with your own images and it'll be available July 15th for about $200. Those are your Tech bites. Have a great day. 518. Let's go ahead and check in with Stephen Cavazos. Welcome back. 
Good to be back, Mark and Steph. You know, we've been watching closely a few things that are happening here on our roadways right now and at I-10 at Frio. We still have this stall that's happening out there. Let's take a closer look. Now, thankfully, they are receiving some assistance, but it is taking a little bit of time to get this 18-wheeler out of the way. We also want to point out how dark it is out on that road, so be sure to give these guys plenty of room. Uh, taking a look here on the map, this is right on those westbound lanes of I-10 at North Frio Street. Still early enough to where it's not causing many issues right now, but again, that's something that we'll be watching very closely. Other than that, it's been looking pretty green here in the Alamo City, although we've spotted a little bit of orange here on I-35 southbound right around Schwab Road. As we've told you throughout the uh, few mornings here on GMSA, there's some construction that's going on out there, and that tends to clear up as the morning picks up. But, of course, we'll be keeping tabs on that throughout here the morning here on GMSA. But some lane closures you want to keep in mind here, you may be aware of here on Loop 1604. This one's the alternating eastbound lane, single main lane closure. That's going to be going on until this Friday. Uh, now, specifically, it's going to be happening here at State Highway 16 and exit ramp to Hausman. What they're doing there is some restriping and barrier settings. Again, that's going to be going on from 9 in the evening till 5 in the morning. Should be wrapping up by Friday, but something to keep in mind if it's part of your early morning commute. Uh, let's bring it back here to 35 at Salado Creek. Actually, looks like we're getting a wider view of that assistance that this uh, these folks are receiving out there. We'll be watching closely to see how things are going to be developing throughout the morning, but looks like we may have our hands busy here. Uh, Steph, is it me or can we tell that Stephen has a new coffee maker at home? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes, well, I feel very caffeinated right now as well. Very happy to be here. That's so. great. Well, yeah, well I, I cheated. He told me earlier, <laughs> yeah. so I knew. Yeah, yeah I knew. there's a little extra perk <laughs> yes, uh, little, in your delivery this yeah. morning. Oh, pep in my step. It's, yes, it's, a little pep in your step. Yeah. The coffee maker is just the coffee and it's the, <laughs> it's the, the, lead, the leaded stuff. <laughs> it, it's also the company. That, oh, that. And, and a few days off to recharge. Yes, that. yes, that too, that too. Yeah, that always helps. So. All right, uh, here's what it looks like uh, from the storms last night, and this was on the uh, northwest and west side of town. This specifically uh, in near uh, the, the medical center on the northwest side, and yeah, tree limbs coming down, fence knocked down, and did a number on that, uh, looks like a soccer goal right there. So a lot of cleanup, and we did have a lot of power outages last night, still a few of them out there, and that was winds that were gusting at times of 60, 65 miles per hour that were reported on the west side of town. Yesterday did make it up to 95, only two triple digits in our area. Now, of course, in your backyard, say in around New Braunfels, it may have gotten close to 100, but Catula and uh, Del Rio reported that, and that's gonna be about the same situation today will be right around mid 90s normal average high temperatures 93 so pretty much in the ballpark and there will be a few numbers that are going to be leaning more toward the upper 90s so computer model this is that one that kind of does things with a bit of a broad brush and um, throughout the afternoon one or two scattered showers couple of thunderstorms very few and far between like they have been but the past couple of evenings they have come right in and around town so only a few of them, but really affected a whole lot of folks. And again, there will be just one or two scattered about here and there. Probably the same situation tomorrow, maybe a little bit lesser chance for that. And then we go in toward the weekend and things are going to be uh, kind of settling down. Should be a pretty good uh, weekend in store. Then we go into um, well, that just jumped past things very quickly there. Sorry about that. I have a little trouble with that computer model right there. Let's go forward here. And that high pressure is the thing that is really dominating our weather. And that's going to stay in control for the next few days. And that's going to help to keep us on the hot side. But it's still off to the west of us. We're also watching this low right here. It is going to pretty much move to the north, but a little bit of a, a little bit closer in here, which means we may see a couple of wraparound showers coming on in here by perhaps Saturday, one or two of them, especially off to the east. So today, mostly sunny skies at noon. We'll start to see some of those clouds billowing up after a clear start. And then just a couple of storms later on this afternoon, one or two here and there. Same thing tomorrow. Friday, pretty much rain free. Saturday, a shower or two in the afternoon is going to be possible, although not very likely. Temperatures are going to start to creep up over the weekend. Bit lower humidity. A little more pleasant in the afternoon in the shade, but look at that 97. That's here in town on Monday and another chance of rain Tuesday. If you haven't busted out your sun visor yet for the front windshield, yes. It's oh, time. yes. I already did that. I had, you know, thrown it in the back of the, the vehicle, but no, very quickly. It's now. Well, you don't front. want the back window, Steph. You want it in the front. <laughs> and now I'm window. in for storage when it was cooler I'm, outside. I'm kidding, <laughs> Silly. 523, <laughs> about 71 degrees. And still ahead in your morning spotlight, Disney continues their series of villain prequels. Plus, a look at the final The Tomorrow War trailer.
Well, they did it for Maleficent and Cruella, and now Disney is giving more characters a prequel. CNN's David Daniel has that more in the Hollywood Minute. No. Beauty and the Beast, Batty and his bestie are getting their own show. Luke Evans and Josh Gad will return as Gaston and Le Fou for a prequel to the 2017 movie, an eight-episode musical series on Disney+. Plus. Production is expected to begin next year. It's hard to believe when all we've known is hurt and loss. I look at you boys and I can honestly say I'm proud to be an orphan. 12 Mighty Orphans is based on the true story of the boys at a Texas orphanage whose football team inspired people across the U.S. during the Great Depression. Writer-director Ty Roberts says the end of the pandemic is a good time for this story. I think it's great for the nation. You know, the, the undertones are our family and community and, and, and just not giving up. Welcome to the future. You and your unit are now in 2051. We're everywhere. We are food and they are hungry. The final trailer is out for The Tomorrow War. Chris Pratt joins a group traveling into the future to help fight a deadly alien species. The battle for the planet begins on Amazon Prime Video July 2nd. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. Chris Pratt looks different. He there. looks very different. What was it that was so different about it? His face yeah. just looks different. I mean, I know he had, you know, lost weight in some, mm -hmm. for some other roles before, and he looked different then, but we at least could recognize him. Now yeah. I, was, I thought it was just a new actor. Looks even more slender. Yes, mm. more so. Interesting. Yeah. 528, about 71 degrees. And still ahead on JMSA, details on renewed efforts to get most of the nation vaccinated as the Delta variant of COVID-19 ramps up. Plus, Royal Caribbean hits a snag when it comes to relaunching some of its cruise ships. Plus, you can't not see them. Murals like this one all over town. But how often do you know the backstory? Today, we launch a new series called If These Walls Could Talk, and we start here on the west side. I'm Katrina Weber. That's coming up. Making headlines this morning, uh, federal health officials keeping a close eye on the new Delta variant of the coronavirus. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning, things a lot more calm than they were yesterday evening for some folks out there. We're going to check them in with Mike right now. Good morning to you. It's Wednesday, June 16th. Thanks for joining us. Uh, we were surprised by the rain. Not that we don't listen to you, Mike, but we knew there was a chance. But boy, when it came down, it came down. And I wasn't at home, so I, I don't know if you got rain in you know our neck of the woods, but we were on the northeast side of town when those showers came down. But, That's, but moreover, we do listen to you. Yes, Thank of Thank you very much. Yeah, and it was on the west and northwest side where it really got smacked hard as far as a lot of the, uh, the heavy winds. There were some uh, downdrafts, and some folks recorded winds about anywhere from 60 60 to 60 miles per hour. And a lot of tree damage over in the uh, kind of medical center area and over toward the the west side of town late yesterday afternoon. Yeah, most folks were looking off at the distance at all the big, beautiful, puffy white clouds developing. But when you get one of those storms, it uh, it does seem like it comes as somewhat of a surprise. And I just heard a whole bunch of thunder and no rain from it. 71 degrees uh, right now, so we are actually two degrees below normal. 67 is the dew point temperature, so it's not bad when you open up the front door heading outside. Here's the uh, satellite radar picture over the past 12 hours and not much was going on. We saw the clouds developing throughout the early afternoon hours and then those storms started to pop up and again over there on the northwest side got pretty hefty and then late last night there was another uh, fairly strong cell right there in southeastern Uvalde County. Nothing is showing up as of right now. There's an ozone action day in effect for the metropolitan area and all the way up the I-35 corridor. 90 at noon and 95 high temperature. One or two of them going to be popping up around the area. A storm or two here or there. Very few and far between. I think the same thing tomorrow as well. And then the weekend, we start to heat up. A little bit of a break in the humidity, but don't get used to it. Details on that coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority and Stephen Cavazos. Anything big going on, sir? Yeah, well, Mike, looks like we're having some stalls and slowdowns here around the Alamo City. And of course, this is what's happening here at 35 at Salado Creek. Taking a look, we can see that it's a Via bus that looks like it's having some trouble. 
trouble there. Thankfully, they are receiving some assistance, but take a look at traffic. It looks like it's building there on 35. Let's take a look right now on our maps and see exactly where this is happening at. And again, this is in the northbound lanes of 35 right at Salado Creek. And although that scene looked a little busy with traffic, it's not causing many issues in that area. But of course, we want to always advise you if you're heading out the door in the next few minutes, give these guys plenty of room. Another stall that we have been watching closely is right here in those westbound lanes of I-10 at North Frio. As we showed you a little bit earlier, if you're with us, uh, there looks like there's an 18 wheeler that's also having some trouble out there. It's still being reported from what we're seeing on trans guide, but thankfully it's still early enough to where we're not seeing many delays or issues out there at this moment in time. Now let's jump into the inbound times. If you're coming into the downtown San Antonio area, if you are coming in from highway 90 on Castroville, we're looking about a 19 minute commute time. And if your travel time is from 35 from Lytle, we're looking at 17 minutes. And if you're coming in from Pleasanton 37, we're looking at 28 minutes. Jumping back here to trans guide one last time where we see that we have that via bus that's still having some trouble. Uh, you can see there that they have placed some cones out there. And there's about three folks out there assisting the driver with whatever trouble that they're having. But of course, we always want to remind you just be safe and buckle up this morning. Mark stuff. Stephen, thank you. Back to normal. It's a phrase we've been saying for a long time, hoping for it, and now finally seeing it to begin to happen around the country. As CNN's Britt Conway reports, with a dangerous COVID-19 variant on the rise, back to normal doesn't mean out of the woods. New York is back in business. California, which was the first state in the country to implement a stay-at-home order, is open now, too. It's exciting. It's exciting to reopen again, be able to put a smile on people's faces. It's so good to be back, uh, to get things back to normal. Back to normal is happening in cities and states across the country. Pandemic era restrictions are going away. But COVID-19 isn't. The Delta variant that ravaged India has now been changed by the CDC from a variant of interest to a variant of concern. Medical experts say it's more transmissible and it might cause more severe illness. It's the dominant variant in the UK now, more than 90% of new cases. Guess what? Mother Nature's telling us what's gonna happen. This is gonna happen in the United States as well. In the United States, it's almost 10% of cases. I expect that that will increase substantially in the weeks ahead. The good news, you guessed it. The vaccines uh, that we have do appear to be effective against the Delta variant, but you have to get both doses. A study showed two doses of the Pfizer vaccine offered 88% protection, but one dose only gave 33%. The expectation is similar for Moderna, but only about half of people 12 and up are fully vaccinated. This is the crunch time now. To get ahead of Delta. Britt Conway, KSAT 12 News. Royal Caribbean is being forced to postpone the inaugural sailing of one of its cruise ships after eight crew members tested positive for COVID-19. The launch of the Odyssey of the Seas out of Fort Lauderdale sets began July 3rd, but is now being pushed back to the end of July. Although all of the Odyssey's 1,400 crew members received the vaccine, the positive tests came before the vaccines were fully effective. Out of an abundance of caution, the July cruises will be delayed, and passengers who were booked on the Odyssey will be given other options. Meanwhile, Royal Caribbean will continue to launch its other cruise ships from ports in Galveston, Seattle and Florida this summer. A federal court has temporarily blocked the Biden administration's pause on oil and gas leasing. The preliminary injunction is a blow to one of the administration's key actions to address climate change. The court sided with more than a dozen states. The states had sued after President Biden directed the administration to not issue new leases for oil and gas drilling in offshore waters and on public land while officials conducted a review of leasing practices. The court's decision is a temporary order while the lawsuit is ongoing. Wednesday morning, glad you're with us. It's 537. Coming up next, you may have noticed prices for nearly everything going up recently, but there is good news when it comes to the price of lumber. Outside with live cam, we had scattered showers and storms late in the day, last couple of days. What about now? What about uh, today, Wednesday? We have more with Mike coming up. 540 by now, you know a lot of things uh, you buy every day are getting more expensive, but there's some good news. The Wall Street Journal is reporting this morning the price of lumber is finally going back down. It has dropped 41 percent from the record high prices we saw in early May. We'll take some good news. However, other items like used cars are still seeing prices grow steadily. Max Massey explains.
The ongoing pandemic has complicated some major supply chains, limiting supply even as demand for goods soars. Overall, consumer prices rose 5% last month over the previous May, May 2020, and this is the biggest jump since the summer of 2008. And it is more than the predicted 4.7% increase. Three sectors you will likely see prices rise, furniture, transportation, and your food. So we are starting with furniture, couches, and beds. Last spring, as the pandemic brought economic chaos, we sawmills closed in anticipation of a housing slump. That slump never came. Next, for the second consecutive month, used car and truck prices surged. Last month, they rose 7.3%. New cars got expensive as well, rising 1.6% in May. That's the largest one month increase since October of 2009. And finally, of course, food. If you're planning on buying uncooked beef roast or beef steaks for your 4th of July party this year, you might want to reconsider the price for each rose 6.4% and 4.3% respectfully just last month. Overall, meat, poultry, fish, and egg prices rose 1.3% last month alone. Max Massey, KSAT 12 News. Yeah, about a 30 or $35 brisket that I used to buy to smoke just for me and my family. Yes. It's now running closer to 50 to $60. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's pretty noticeable. Yep. Hopefully Ouch. things will shake out in the end and prices will come back down. Yes, we hope so. Time now is 542 and about 71 degrees out there. Up next, pets are back on the morning show. Tell you about a furry friend that needs a new home coming up next. It is puppy time here and Michelle Thorson from the Animal Defense League is joining us and this big boy too big to put up on a table or a chair. Who is this guy? <laughs> this is Charlie Bear. So Hello. Charlie Bear is one of our babies that is available for adoption at our main campus. Um, he is four years old. He's a terrier mix. So a little prematurely gray around the bus. A little prematurely. He's okay. an old soul, though. He's very calm, has kind of the d demeanor of an older gentleman, but he's just distinguished. <laughs> but when he sits down, he was just looking up and had just such a polite look yes, on his face. Yes, he's such a handsome, well-mannered boy. The entire car right here, he was just laying down in the back. He's such a good boy. He would be great for any home. You said he was heartworm positive, so he's on treatment for that. So he has been treated at our okay. center. Um, so with that, he just has to be kind of on limited activity for the next few months or so. Mm -hmm. And then um, he has to come back to our center to get the heartworm retest in about six months or so, which ADL completely covers for anyone who's interested in adopting him. And just if you adopt him, um, just kind of take it easy for the next six months or something like that, as mm -hmm. far as, you know, running around or something like that. But I'm sure he'd be comfortable on the, the couch. So. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. He's definitely a couch potato, um, but he gets along with any other dogs. Um, uh, he didn't seem reactive at all to any of the cats that we walked by, um, and he does well with children, too. Oh, well, you're just all around great yes, guy. Yes, he's just all around great. <laughs> so everything getting back to normal at your place, too, right? Yes, yes. We are really excited to actually now be open uh, as an open door facility, so appointments are no longer required if you're looking to adopt, and so that's for both of our campuses, both the Paul Jolly Center across from the zoo and our main campus on Nacogdoches. Okay. Yeah. And lots of puppies, kittens, everybody. Lots of puppies, lots of kittens, um, especially right now with our kittens. We're still in the midst of kitten season. In. So we have a ton of little babies that are looking for their forever homes, and we encourage everyone to come out and take a look at them. And also volunteer opportunities. Yes, we are now opening up our volunteer uh, department as well. So uh, we encourage everyone to visit our website, adltexas.org, to sign up for an orientation. And you can come and help us take care of babies like Charlie Bear. Yes, if you want to go on out there, and again, no appointments necessary, head on over. Let everything go to Nacogdoches or the Paul Jolly Center. Give them a call, 655-1481. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you. Great to see our pets in person again. Mm -hmm. And summertime is a great time to pick up a new book, and the San Antonio Public Library wants to give you prizes for reading. Summer with Sapo, or San Antonio Public Library, underway, and there's fun programs for kids, teens, and adults. Here's how it works for adults. Just visit any library branch, pick up a uh, chancla goals for your souls tracker. Your goals could include reading or listening to books or exploring something the library encouraged you to learn about. Once you meet your goals, return to the branch, and you'll get a limited edition Summer with Sapo Mason. Members with the library say it is a fun way to get involved. I think it's just an opportunity uh, for folks to try something new. You know, um, maybe they want to try a new author or try a new genre of books. Maybe they want to attend a library program on a subject that they don't know anything about. Or, you know, we have lots of uh, ways for folks to learn new things. So that's why I would encourage anyone to participate. Anyone 18 and above can participate in the summer with Sapple for adults. It's free and it runs until August 31st. 
Good morning, everyone. Busy start to this Wednesday morning. We've been keeping uh, track here on a few stalls. This one happening here at 35 at Salado Creek. Taking a look here at Trans Guide. Looks like it's causing quite the scene out there. We have a few crews that are working to assist what looks like a via bus that stalled out there. But although that it is an early start, we are seeing a few drivers already on the road right now. Taking a look here on the map. This is right in those northbound lanes of I-35 at Salado Creek, not too far from Splashtown Drive, and thankfully not creating many issues on the road right now. But of course, something that we will continue to watch as traffic does continue to pick up throughout the morning. Now, a crash that just popped up in our system is actually happening over here at I-10 westbound at Cambolis Road. You can see that this one is a little bit further up in the northwest side, not causing many issues right now. But again, this just popped up in our system. We'll be watching that one pretty closely as well. Now, we've also spotted a slowdown that's happening here off 35 at Schwab. Uh, this is in the southbound lanes coming into the downtown San Antonio area. You can see that traffic slowing down to 10 miles per hour, but picking up to around 44 as things improve. But we know that there is construction going on out there, so this is not too much of a surprise right now. But of course, that is another thing that we will continue to be keeping tabs on. Let's bring it back here to Transguide 35. It's a lot of Creek. Quite the welcome back. Pretty busy start, I think. Thank you, Stephen. Mike wants to talk Fiesta. Tomorrow night, believe it, it's been two years, more than two years since we had Fiesta. Can you believe that? And it all kicks off tomorrow. Fiesta Fiesta. That's tomorrow. right. You're ready for that. We're going we're gonna to be broadcasting it. Steve and Isis are going to be broadcasting it. And then, and Fiona and I are down there on stage right there on Alamo Street. And it's just going to be a whole blast. Lots of fun, fireworks and everything like that. And then the fun continues Friday, right? And, and it's late. It's late, right? So yeah. specifically, the thing you're talking about is tomorrow night right. uh, at 8 o'clock? Fiesta the kickoff. 8, 8 o'clock till 10 is, is the broadcast for it. Yep. Okay. And then and, case... I'm sorry. No, I was going to say you can go down there if you want to or uh, watch it right on TV. Okay, and then KSAT's first ever Fiesta Porch Parade airs Friday from 8 to 10 right here on KSAT. The first hour features tons of information about Fiesta's history, including traditions that hundreds of years. Uh, yes, and we're also going to announce all the winners of the Porch Parade, so it's going to be pretty cool. Yeah, so that's coming up Friday from 8 to 10. ABC's Juneteenth special, which was set to air same time, will air Saturday at 2 a.m. All right, Mike's got a lot to talk about weather. So, of course, the porch parade uh, took the place of Battle of Flowers and yes. Flambeau, kind of a combination. Then there is the river parade, and we're going to be broadcasting that Monday night. On uh, Monday, yeah. As well. So Looking forward it, to that. It's just amazing. It's kind of exciting. Fiesta finally back after two, more than two years. All right, yesterday, this is what, if you weren't underneath one of those storms, it was beautiful to look at those big, gorgeous, puffy, cumulus clouds out there. And uh, I love the flag in the foreground, but uh, boy, it's going to be the same situation today as well with one or two of those thunderstorms kind of popping up around the area. A couple of clouds hanging around here. We're already starting to see the glow of the uh, sunrise this morning. 71 degrees here in town, 68 Bernie Stage, Ball Verde, and humidity is really not bad. We've got these dew point temperatures, measure moisture in the atmosphere. Everybody is down in the 60s right now. You know, you'd love to see it below 60. We may be down in this range by the weekend because we are going to get somewhat of a break in the humidity temporarily coming in here this weekend. Here's the uh, satellite radar picture going back 12 hours, and you can see that there were those thunderstorms. Again, they were few and far between, but boy, they hit in some of the most populated areas there in the north and northwest and west side of town. Did produce some very hefty winds. We had reports of a lot of damage, some power outages. Winds reported about 60, 65 miles per hour. And then there was one other cell that popped up late last night there in southeastern Uvalde County. That did produce severe weather, but there's nothing showing up on radar as of right now. Yeah, down here to the uh, south in the Bay of Campeche, there is, at least satellite picture-wise, not much, but Hurricane Center is still saying that this has a very good chance of becoming a tropical depression in the next uh, 48 to uh, 72 hours. And as far as any rain chances today, we will have one or two scattered showers around the area. Um, again, few and far between at best. Pretty much same thing tomorrow. Then we go into the weekend. This system is going to basically track up here to the north and well east of us. A lot of heavy rain around Louisiana, uh, but then there will be a couple of showers around well off to the east in Houston, and some of those may actually try and wrap around a little bit further. And so that's why you have a small chance for some rain in the forecast by Saturday, one or two and basically off to the east, but just something to uh, kind of keep an eye on. All right, today, 90 at noon, mostly sunny skies, 
Then a high temperature today is going to make it up to 95 with a shower, thunderstorm or two out there. Most of us won't see any rain. Same thing tomorrow. Wednesday, excuse Wednesday, Friday. Let's get to Friday here. Yes. Don't deprive ourselves. 95 degrees hotter over the weekend. A shower to Saturday and it's going to be hot. A little break in the humidity over the weekend, so that's going to be nice, but won't last forever. What's cooking on SA Live? We are going to be doing uh, soul food today, and it's a family recipe, good old comfort soul food that's going to be on here. We're going to tell you where this uh, this area is 10 years in San Antonio and they open a new location. It says Mrs. Kitchen Soul Food. Yes, okay. indeed. Salmon croquettes. Ooh, and that's great. Yeah, it's I can't wait. <laughs> I bet you can. Can't wait. Thank you, Mike. Right now it is 554, about 71 degrees. Let's take a look at your winning lotto numbers. We have pick three, two, two, nine, fireball six, and daily four, seven, seven, zero, two, fireball three. Your cash five numbers, 12, 13, 26, 29, 35, and Mega Millions, 18, 22, 27, 38, 52, Mega Ball 11, Mega Plier 4. Good morning. Coming up on GMA, we are live in Geneva for that high stakes summit. President Biden meeting face to face with Russian President Vladimir Putin. A lot on the line as the two discuss election interference, cyber attacks, and a possible prison swap. Our team on the ground covering it all for you. That's all coming up, plus much more right here on GMA. We'll see y'all soon. Ahead in our next hour of GMSA problems continued for Southwest Airlines on Tuesday. The airline canceling flights for the second day in a row due to technology issues. We'll have an update. We're also keeping an eye on the roads for you right now. We've still got the standing incident at 35 at Salado Creek, which has got traffic stacking just a bit, but at least it's flowing. Stephen Cavazos is back in the house this morning. He'll have an update coming up right here on GMSA. If your phone went off last night, it was for a blue alert issued by the Department of Public Safety. Good morning, I'm Sarah Acosta coming up on GMSA, the suspect they're looking for. Deadly airstrikes continue on the Gaza Strip overnight. Dozens of people killed since early Sunday. We'll have the very latest. Take a look at the roads with Transguide. Have your traffic out there. Stephen Cavazos back after taking a few days off. And taking a look outside with live cam. What a beautiful shot out there. Very, very pretty. We like that. 71 degrees for now. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Your sunrise in high definition. Good morning, everybody. It is Wednesday, June 16th. Thanks for joining us this morning. Yeah, it's really pretty outside. I, I just wish it would feel like that all day long. I know. <laughs> yes, it does warm up rather quickly. I think by our 9 a.m. show yesterday, Mike, we were already mm -hmm. flirting with 90 degrees. Warm. That's just not right. I know. You know. But again, we were so spoiled this spring. It just yes. kind of puts things into perspective. Yeah, and, and things are starting to heat up. We will get a little bit of a break in the humidity. Uh, somewhat of a break this morning, but this weekend. So, but don't get used to it. Kind of like we didn't, shouldn't have gotten used to all those lower temperatures uh, in the past month or so. Beautiful start this morning. A couple of clouds hanging around here. And uh, look at that nice orange glow right along the horizon. Do have an ozone action day in effect today for all of the metropolitan areas and then going up in towards San Marcos and Austin. And temperatures uh, right around 7 o'clock or so will be 73 degrees. We're at 71 at uh, last check out, at, out there at the airport. And yeah, it's going to warm up fairly quickly. We've got this little bit of drier air this morning, and that heats up a lot more easily and a lot more quickly than moist air does. We'll be right around 90 or the low 90s at noon and then top off at 95 degrees today. And there will be one or two Stray showers, thunderstorms, kind of like the past couple of days. Most of us won't see rain, but if you do, could have a very decent downpour and a lot of lightning and thunder and some uh, pretty gusty winds out there. But again, that's going to be the exception rather than the rule. Same thing tomorrow. We'll talk about the weekend forecast and lower humidity, but it does come with a little bit of a price. Details in just a couple of moments. Traffic Authority, Mr. Cavazos, what is the latest, sir? Hey, Mike. Well, I'll tell you what. If you are going to be heading out the door any which way in the next few minutes from 35 at Salado Creek, we are expecting some big issues out here. Let's take a look here at the wall. Uh, it does look like there's a via bus that's stalled out there. And, you know, while this morning is picking up and we're seeing people getting out on the roads, it looks like it's causing quite the delay there. Take a look right here on the map. Now, we've been watching this one pretty closely. This is right here at I-35 
northbound at Salado Creek, not too far from Splashtown Drive. Uh, earlier, we had told you about this uh, stall. It wasn't causing many issues, but take a look at this traffic slowing down at 34 miles per hour, 34 miles per hour, that is, and 36 miles per hour a little bit further back. So definitely expect those delays this morning. And not too far from there, we've spotted a crash here at 35 southbound at Ben Zingleman. Now, this one, we're not too sure what caused that, but that's actually being reported as a rollover crash right now, uh, not causing any issues in those southbound lanes, but definitely watch out for those drivers and those folks that need some assistance right there this morning. We've also spotted a stall here off Loop 410 eastbound at Starcrest Drive, uh, not causing any delays right now in that area, but again, something that we are keeping tabs with. We do expect this one's going to wrap up pretty quickly here. Let's bring it over here to our inbound times. If you're going to be coming into the downtown San Antonio area, take a look here. If you're coming in from Floresville, we have about a 28 minute commute time from 37. And if you're coming in from La Verde on 87, we got 23 minutes. And if you're coming in from Seguin, it's looking pretty green. 29 on I-10. Let's bring it back here to I-35 at Salado Creek, where we still have this issue developing, definitely causing a lot of issues right now, Mark and Steph. But we'll be watching it very closely throughout the morning right here on GMSA. Thank you, Stephen. Your phone may have gone off last night. That alert issued across the state. The Department of Public Safety sent a blue alert to Texans looking for a wanted man. Sarah Costa is downtown to explain a blue alert and gives us a description of that suspect. Good morning. Blue alerts are rare. DPS issues them when there is an active search for a person who has seriously injured or killed a law enforcement officer and the Texas Department of Public Safety issued a statewide blue alert on Tuesday for Royce Edward Wood from Wise County. Wood was last seen on Highway 287 and FM 407 in Rome, Texas. That is just north of Fort Worth. He was seen in that area around 8 o'clock last night. DPS described Wood as a 43 year old man who is six foot two, weighs 200 pounds and is bald. Police say Wood was last seen on foot wearing a baseball cap with a camouflage bandana around it, black sunglasses, a vest, a green shirt and shorts. To report any information to the Wise County Sheriff's Office, call this number 940-627-5971. Again, blue alerts are rare and DPS says they issue them to prevent further harm and help find that suspect in a quicker manner. From downtown, I'm Sarah Acosta, KSAT 12 News. We are hearing from the family of a woman who drowned while trying to rescue children from drowning in the Guadalupe River near Seguin. The Guadalupe County Sheriff's Office says Cassandra Kendrick and her family stepped in to help Victor Villanueva save his three kids from a strong current near the FM 1117 bridge. The kids were saved, but Kendrick and Villanueva were swept away. Kendrick's family is devastated by the loss. They say her sacrifice inspires them to keep going on. I feel that strength. I do not believe she's left us. But she was so strong. Yeah, I can still feel her spirit move through us as we push through this. Kendrick went by the name, his nickname CJ, and was honorably discharged from U.S. Air Force. She loved to work and spend time with her family. Her family says her motto was to live life to the fullest, which is what they're encouraging everyone to do. They are raising money for funeral expenses. To find out how you can help, visit our website at ksat.com. Topping your morning headlines in Israel, airstrikes continue on the Gaza Strip overnight. This comes after the Israel Defense Force said incendiary balloons were launched from Gaza earlier in the day. At least 42 people in Gaza City have been killed since early Sunday. 212 people have died in the Gaza Strip since tensions escalated last week. This is the latest outbreak of violence between Israel's military and Hamas. Today's the day. President Biden and Russian President Vladimir Putin will meet face to face for a summit in Geneva, Switzerland. Putin has just arrived a short time ago. U.S.-Russia talks will take place at a lakeside villa. According to U.S. officials, the talks are expected to last four to five hours. The two leaders not planning to share meals together. They will not hold a joint news conference. Instead, Presidents Biden and Putin will hold solo press conferences after the summit. The U.S. Senate has unanimously passed a bill to establish Juneteenth as a federal holiday. It still needs to pass the House before going to President Joe Biden's desk. The bill designates June 19th, 2021 as Juneteenth Independence Day. It's in recognition of June 19th, 1865, the date on which news of the end of slavery reached slaves in southwestern states. This comes after Senator Ron Johnson, a Republican from Wisconsin, announced he would no longer object to the measure moving forward. Any one senator can block the passage of a measure by unanimous consent. 
More issues for Southwest Airlines. The airline suffering technology problems for a second straight day yesterday. Southwest said it was working to restore normal operations after a problem with network connectivity. The Southwest Airlines app says booking wait times via phone are one to two hours this morning. Extremely high call volumes. By mid-afternoon Tuesday, the airline had canceled about 500 flights and delayed nearly 1,300 others. The issue came up less than 24 hours after another technology problem disrupted flights. Delta and Alaska Airlines say they're working to fix tech issues that have been affecting their booking sites and apps as well. And good news when it comes to lumber prices. Futures for July delivery are down more than 40% from their record highs in May. More wood is now hitting the market from builders and retailers who hoarded some, most likely worried about the supply running out. But lumber futures are still running high, about three times what is typical for this time of year. A hey, reminder, you can catch this week's episode of Case Hat Explained, solve with the history and legacy of the Bonham Exchange Nightclub. It's been a safe space for the LGBTQ plus community for the past 40 years. Stream it now, CaseHat.com or on the Case Hat TV app. And time now is 6.08 and it's about 72 degrees out there. Still ahead on our morning show, we'll introduce you to a puppy who's had a long road to recovery. Now she is looking for a forever home. Taking a look outside with live cam, another beautiful shot out there. We're at 72 degrees and things pretty calm this morning after some downpours last night. Introducing your 2021 Fiesta Royalty, powered by your local San Antonio area Chevy dealers. Hi, my name's Sophia Christensen and I'm this year's Fiesta Teenage Queen. Viva Fiesta! Meet the Women's Club Fiesta Teen Queen for 2021. I'm a senior at Reagan High School. I really love science and history. Um, I'll be majoring in biomedical science at Texas A&M in the fall. And when she graduates from college, she hopes to work with athletes. My like, dream job is to be a sports medicine doctor for a professional football team. Sophia understands the importance of volunteering as part of her roles in the National Honor Society and the Women's Club of San Antonio. Giving back to the community is super important to me. I think it's really important that we help other people and other organizations that might not have as much as we do. And when you have the ability to volunteer and give back, I think everyone should do it. And the Fiesta event she most looks forward to. I really love the Women's Club flower show because um, I get to participate in it every year by making cool wreaths, floral designs, or just floral designs that really like resemble Fiesta and all the colors. And when she takes her crown off, she enjoys watching movies with her brother and sister. My favorite movies like are the Star Wars series, and then I really like old 80s movies that you know just make you feel good and it's like relaxing to watch. Morning Sports, how about submissions baseball following an hour long rain delay? The missions were looking to extend their win streak to five games last night. Naturals took the lead in the third inning, but in the fourth, the missions regained the lead with an RBI single to score. Jack Sawinski added an insurance run bottom of the sixth, the winning uh, inning rather with his 11th homer of the season, his third straight. Uh, missions win 5-3. Series continues tonight, 7:05 out at Nelson Wolf Stadium. San Antonio Spurs assistant coach Becky Hammond already slated to interview for the vacant head coaching job in Portland this week. She's also on the list of candidates for the Orlando Magic. Now Boston fans would like to see her on the list of candidates for the Celtics head coaching job. It's after Brad Stevens moved up to the front office to take over as president after Danny Ainge announced he was retiring. How do we know this? Because someone put up a billboard asking Stevens to do just that. Hire either Becky or former Celtics assistant coach Kara Lawson. Hamlet played 16 years in the WNBA before she became a Spurs assistant in 2014. Similar to Carol Lawson, who played 13 years in the WNBA before becoming a first female Celtics assistant in 2019. There's the billboard. Uh, Lawson is the head coach for the Duke women's team. Now, to reminder, if you're heading to the beach, wildlife experts from our Texas coast are asking you to destroy your castles after you build them. That's because structures can actually be dangerous for creatures like sea turtles. Every year, thousands of hatchlings rise from the nests along the coast to make their way towards the water. Many of them picked off by predators like crabs and raccoons. Man-made obstacles like sandcastles slow the turtles down even further. 
The structures can also pose a threat to other visitors and Turtle Patrol vehicles. Pins officials asking that you fill in any sand pits and make sure to knock down any structures. Pins is probably Padre Island National yes. Seashore? Yes. Okay. When you go visit Padre Island, uh, make sure to stop at the visitor center where you can get a free trash bag to assist with beach cleanup. Always a great idea. Happy and playing. That's how this puppy is now after weeks of recovering at the San Antonio Humane Society. Now she is looking for a forever home. Aww. Denali arrived to the organization with a severe skin disease caused by mites. So SHS says Denali is now joyful, energetic, and ready to get adopted. If you want to learn more about Denali's story and how you can adopt her, you can visit our website right now, kset.com. I love her name. I know, it's cute. It's a cute picture. And she's over her mange and improving every single day. Glad she's doing better. Sure, she'll get adopted soon. I'm sure. I hope so. 616. Let's go ahead and check in with Stephen Cavazos. We've had quite a few problems this morning. Yeah, Denali just making my heart just Aww. super cute. You know, yes, definitely issues Mark and Steph here at 35 at Solano Creek. We're actually actually seeing a little bit of an improvement. Uh, take a look over here. We did have a via bus that stalled out over here on the I-35 northbound lanes, but take a look back over here. It almost looks like a strip of light, and that's because it was causing a lot of issues uh, as for drivers that are heading in that direction. Now, taking a look right here on the map, it's here on those northbound lanes of 35 at Solano Creek. Now, we know that two lanes still remain blocked off not too far from Splashtown Drive because of that stall, but uh, that is something that we we have been watching closely and we're hoping to see that situation continue to improve as the morning does pick up. Now we did have a crash that looks like it just cleared from our system uh, not too far from there off I-35 southbound at Ben Zingelman Road. No issues right now in those southbound lanes, but again, what we are going to be continuing to watch here is this uh, delay that we're seeing on I-35 northbound right at Salado Creek. Thankfully, it looks like the situation is cleared, so hopefully, Mike, traffic will also improve. And make sure you take your sunglasses yeah. as well because there's a lot of it out there. We're going to show you the sunrise in just a moment. We'll see plenty of it throughout the morning hours. Temperatures right now, uh, these are some of the lowest readings we've had around here in, gosh, it's it's been days because we have stayed in the lower and even close to mid-70s, and the humidity is down a little bit on top of that. Now, as far as the rest of today, we go from mostly clear, a couple of clouds around here, partly cloudy, one or two thunderstorms are going to be popping up again today. Of course, we had some of those yesterday and most of us didn't see anything, but if you did, wow, it was some heavy downpours and a whole lot of thunder, lightning and wind. Winds were a big problem on the west side of town, especially the weekend is going to be hotter, but a little bit lower humidity. We get a slight break from the humidity this weekend. Don't get used to it, though, because you know it's not going to last forever around here. Take a look at this picture and I mean, just a great shot of the uh, that bolt of lightning and notice how the rain shaft in the lightning strikes not right in the middle of the rain shaft that's coming down just in in buckets right there. That's why you have to be really, really careful when it comes to thunderstorms, even though the storm may be away from you, you can still get lightning not right in that storm. So if you can hear lightning, you're definitely in danger of or in the the area where you might see a little bit of a, a lightning strike or two. So but yeah, once again, great looking picture, but always around any sort of thunderstorms. Even if it's away from you, you're still not completely in the safe zone. Beautiful view of some of those high clouds out there as the sun is coming up. 71 degrees right now in town, 67 Valverde, and some um, upper 60s in parts of the hill country. We're actually a little bit below normal, the average temperature. And the uh, once again, dew point temperatures are fairly pleasant right now. Now, going back 12 hours and those thunderstorms that popped up again, they were few and far between, but they hit right there on the northwest and west side of town. Wind gust about 60, 65 miles per hour, and then another severe storm around uh, Uvalde. We had some pretty good thunderstorms down around Kern City as well last night. Then down in the Gulf of Mexico, still we're watching what isn't really shaping up to be too much right now, but Hurricane Center still says this has a very good chance of becoming a tropical system, a tropical depression in the next 48 to 72 hours. Uh, one or two of those thunderstorms around today, tomorrow, maybe the same situation around here. One or two of them then um, pretty tranquil on Friday. Now, a lot of rain from this system as it works its way pretty much to the north or to the northeast. Uh, 
Louisiana panhandle is going to get inundated Mississippi and then further off to the east. Now we may actually see a couple of wraparound showers, a lot of rain around Houston, a couple of wraparound showers from this on Saturday just because it's edging a little bit closer uh, to the west. Still most of it well off to the east, and that's the rainy side of things. But like I said, just a couple of wraparound showers around here on Saturday. So forecast today, we're going to be up to 90 at noon, mostly sunny skies. We'll see a few more of those clouds kind of building up throughout the uh, late morning, early afternoon hours, and then a couple of storms later on this afternoon. Most of us won't see anything 95 for a high temperature. Heat index will be in the upper 90s and roughly the same situation tomorrow, Friday. Temperatures start to go up over the weekend. We get a little bit drier air. So kind of a give and take a little more pleasant in the uh, in the shade 97 Monday. Of course, summer begins late Sunday evening and a shower or two on Saturday. Do you guys eat every day on SA Live or nearly every it, day? Ne nearly every day. OK, yeah, when, it, it when? looks like it. <laughs> yes, indeed. We ate yesterday and today we are going to be eating some soul food around here. Yep, recipes that go back generations. So you know when grandma and great grandma <laughs> made these recipes are going to be good. They've had this place in uh, about 10 years in SA an open new location. We're making salmon croquettes and Jen is going to visit their restaurant. We're doing the live cooking. Thank mm -hmm. goodness. I was for a minute there. I was worried that it was all going to be remote. Jen, yeah. Oh, well, good. I'm glad you get to take part. Bon appetit. Yes. Thank you very much. You're welcome. 621 to 72 degrees. And there is a new sandwich shop coming to town. Speaking of food, and it's got an unusual theme. We're going to take a look after the break. At Pure Leaf, saying no is the most important ingredient in making herbal iced tea. By selecting the finest botanicals, we say no caffeine, no stress, no better way to relax after a long day of anything. Pure Leaf, no is beautiful. For asthma, there's primatine mist. When symptoms strike, your airways narrow and there's less breathing room. Primatine mist is clinically shown to open airways quickly. Get the number one FDA approved over the counter asthma inhaler and breathe easy again. Home is dancing because no one's watching. Home is a reason to disturb the peace. Home is laughter. At Stanley Steamer, we love homes and we know that a clean home is a healthy home. We're ready when you are. The pursuit of prey. It's a shared instinct for a lynx and your cat, and so is their desire for meat. That's why there's Blue Wilderness, created to satisfy a cat's craving for meat. Feed your cat's wild spirit with Blue Wilderness. In this morning's GMA First Look, billion dollar donation. The ex-wife of Amazon founder Jeff Bezos announcing she and new husband, science teacher Dan Jewett, have donated nearly $3 billion to 286 organizations, including those focused on the arts, education, and combating racial injustice. Nonprofit Native Americans in Philanthropy received $2 million. It's pretty rare to just write a check and believe in the organizations, and that's that's what they did. Mackenzie Scott writing in a blog post that her goal was to de-emphasize privileged voices and cede focus to others, and that it would be better if disproportionate wealth were not concentrated in a small number of hands. And we'll have much more on this multi-billion dollar donation coming up at 7 a.m. With your GMA First Look, I'm Rebecca Jarvis, ABC News, New York. Here in town, a new marijuana themed sandwich joint is opening in the Alamo City. It's called Chiba Hut and will have more than 30 subs and a full service bar. So the owners of the San Antonio franchise say the place will have a relaxed and welcoming vibe. It will open on June 28th at 11 911 Alamo Ranch Parkway. That's from 10 a.m. until 10 p.m. We have all this information right now on KSET.com. I'm looking at the menu. There's some there's a pretty wide variety of stuff that nothing jumps out at me um, a lot <laughs> as of far as the theme. Right, right. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, there's a few on here probably can't say on the air, but uh, it looks pretty good. All right. Interesting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Time now is 626 and about 72 degrees right now. Ahead on GMSA, San Antonio police looking for a man who they say attacked a woman with a knife. We'll have those details. And a quick look out at TransGuide. There is I-35 at Salado Creek. Things looking a little better there. We will be checking in with our Stephen Cavazos soon.
And welcome back. It's 630. Let's look out with Trans Guy. There's a shot of 281 at Divine right there. Things are moving. And here's the uh, the really nice shot of our sunrise over San Antonio right now out there at 410. Traffic looks really good. Stephen Cavazos is back from a few days off and he will have an update coming up. It is Wednesday. It is June 16th. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks for joining us. And right now we're getting a little break from from the rain. Some of us saw a lot of rain yesterday evening. Some powerful storms. We had some wind damage, quite a few power outages. Uh, yep. Last night around seven, eight o'clock. Yeah, yeah, they started getting fired up and you know, like we were talking about, they're going to be very few and far between, but it just so happened that that big storm was right there on the northwest and west side of San Antonio and Bear County and did obviously produce some severe weather. Some wind gusts were reported by uh, folks over on the west side about 60 to 65 miles per hour and you know, a lot of tree damage out there. Now everything has settled down. Obviously, a couple of uh, mid high level clouds out there. Beautiful start this morning and yeah temperatures right now are fairly pleasant we are sitting at 71 degrees actually a couple of notches below normal dew point that's not bad either 67 degrees especially for morning hours in this time of year and uh, northwesterly wind at about six miles per hour mold pigweed grass are all on the low side the updated count is going to be coming out in about an hour or so do have an ozone action day in effect today which yeah, it uh, covers the entire metropolitan area and obviously going up the corridor in toward uh, San Marcos as well as Austin and clear mostly clear and pleasant this morning. Then later on this afternoon, we are going to have, uh, you know, you'll see those clouds kind of developing some of those uh, little puffy cumulus clouds here and there, and then one or two storms are going to pop up scattered about the area. Most of us won't see rain, but if you do, it could have a decent couple of downpours like was the case last night. Tomorrow, still one or two of them can't be ruled out. Then we go into the weekend. Well, it is going to be getting hotter. However, we'll have a little bit lower humidity, slightly comfort more comfortable in the shade over the weekend and perhaps a shower or two on Saturday. Of course, that lower humidity not going we know better. It's not going to last forever. Details on the weekend coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos, what is going on, sir? Some good news, Mike. That's what's going on. And we're happy to report that that stall over here at 35 at Salado Creek has since cleared and traffic is now moving nice and smooth. Let's go ahead and take a look here at Trans Guide and show you just how smooth things are looking. Traffic, which was blocked down to two lanes, has now opened up here and we're seeing people getting back on the roads and no delays, which is a good thing if you're going to be heading out the door here in the next few minutes. Now that crowd that stall was a via bus that looked like it stalled here in the northbound lanes at Salado Creek. But as you can see here on our maps, traffic is moving pretty normal there at about 68 miles per hour. So again, a pretty good sign and a good update. Now we still have this stall that's happening out here at 410 eastbound at Starcrest Drive. This one hasn't caused a lot of issues right now for our early morning commuters, but it's still being reported there in our system. Uh, but again, thankfully, no issues uh, to report in that area as of right now. Uh, but let's go ahead and take a look at some construction that our our early morning commuters need to be on the lookout for and we talk a lot about loop 1604 and overnight construction. Now text dot reports that this construction is actually happening today between eight this morning and six in the evening. Now it's going to be a single main lane closure from I 35 to FM 2536. Now what they're doing there is just some road improvements. Now again, text dot is reporting that this is actually wrapping up today. So that's some good news, but do expect that we will have some construction out there this morning. Now taking a look at our inbound times, we do have 26 minutes of your coming into the downtown San Antonio area, perhaps from New Braunfels on 35 southbound. If you're coming in from Bulverde on 281, we got 26 minutes. And over here from I-10 on coming in from Bernie, we have 24 minutes. But let's go ahead and actually show you a different view here at Transguy. We do have a stalled vehicle that did pop up just right now. We are going to be watching this closely, but you don't want to do what those guys are doing, which is driving too close to the car. So you want to move over, give them plenty of room so they can get out of the way and get you to your destination safely. Mark Stephanie. Thank you, Stephen. New this morning, a man is in jail after police say he assaulted a man with cerebral palsy. It happened last Wednesday at the intersection of Fredericksburg Road and Babcock Road. That's where police say 60-year-old Valentin Ortiz hit a man in a wheelchair in the head with a chain six times. Ortiz was arrested yesterday and charged with injury to the disabled. The Texas Department of Public Safety has issued a statewide blue alert. A blue alert is issued for people who have either killed or injured a law enforcement officer. The search is on right now for 43-year-old Royce Edward Wood. He was last seen Sunday night 
in Rome, Texas, just northwest of Fort Worth. He's bald about six foot two, was last seen on foot wearing a baseball cap with a camouflage bandana around it, black sunglasses, vest, green shirt, and shorts. If you have any information, call the Wise County Sheriff's Office, the number on your screen there in that little yellow section. It is 940-627-5971. Right now, San Antonio police are searching for a man who attacked a woman with a knife. It happened around 430 this morning at a Motel 6 at 410 near Marbach. That's on the west side of town. Investigators tell us the man cut the woman under her ear and took off. Police say he left his car at a nearby gas station and fled. Happening today, Governor Greg Abbott will be talking about his plans for the Texas-Mexico border. The news conference will begin this afternoon at 3 at the Capitol in Austin. Governor Abbott announced last week during a trip to Del Rio that he would present plans for Texas to build its own wall. He says he will utilize crowdfunding as a way to help pay for the construction. Again, that news conference begins at 3 and you can watch the live stream on KSET.com. Two people are dead following a workplace shooting at a factory in Alabama. An employee on the overnight shift firing without warning. 100 workers were in the factory when that gunman opened fire. Authorities are calling the shooting completely unprovoked. Here's ABC's Victor Okendo. Authorities in Alabama are investigating the deadly shooting in the middle of the overnight shift at a fire hydrant factory. It's a sad day. It's something we only read about here, but... It's here. About 100 workers were on duty around 2.30 in the morning at the Mueller Company plant in Albertville, dubbed the fire hydrant capital of the world. Police say 34-year-old Andreas Horton, an employee, pulled out a handgun and started shooting, killing two, wounding two more. Authorities calling the shooting completely unprovoked. One co-worker didn't want his face shown. We went into work like it was any other night, then right after two when we was all getting ready to leave, um, we heard gunshots and then the intercom system said active shooter. Hours later, police finding the suspect dead from a self-inflicted gunshot wound inside of a car along with several weapons. The victims identified as Michael Dobbins and David Horton, no known relation to the suspect. The company releasing a statement saying it's shocked and deeply saddened. Tough times. We'll get through it. We're a strong community. The chief also said victims were found scattered across a pretty large area here inside of the plant. There is still no word on a motive. There have been at least six of these workplace shootings in the United States in just the last three months. Victor Okendo, ABC News, Albertville, Alabama. Now to a story our defenders have been following closely. As CPS Energy faces a billion dollar deficit from February's winter storms, we've learned the utility has spent over $2.5 million in outside fees to fight bills. According to newly released records, the utility has paid five outside law firms from storm related for storm related legal work. They have spent more than a million dollars to CPS Energy's lead counsel in its ongoing lawsuit against ERCOT. CPS officials sued ERCOT in March. They claim the organization allowed power companies to overcharge for energy. CPS officials have also filed close to 20 lawsuits against natural gas providers claiming these companies price gouged during the winter blast. You can read more about this story on KSAT.com. ERCOT still needs people to limit use of electricity. So far, officials say they still do not know what's led to power plants to go offline unexpectedly, causing strain on the grid. Typically, most of the facilities are brought back into service by mid-May after undergoing summer preparations. In a statement, the grid operator says in part, quote, ERCOT will be issuing a request for information from generation owners to better understand why so many units are out of service and determine any further actions that may need to be taken, end quote. Meanwhile, the city's cooling centers will remain open through Friday. We have the entire list posted for you on KSAT.com. SAISD will host a free summer meal program. It'll be for kids 18 and younger and for students over 18 and still in school but are considered disabled and enrolled in special education programs. SAISD will provide free curbside meals 1030 a.m. to 1130 on Tuesdays and Thursdays. This all starts June 21st. We have more on this posted on KSAT.com. Great news this morning. Fiesta is finally back after not being able to celebrate last year. People are eager to get out their flower crowns and cascarones. And since we are celebrating in June, things will look a little different, but there are lots of ways you can take part in the fun. Sarah Costa getting ready to celebrate joined us live. Sarah, where are you exactly? 
Hey, Viva Fiesta, Mark and Stephanie. I'm in the first ever Fiesta Porch Parade warehouse, AKA KSAT's lobby, but hey, we are excited to, Woo! that was really loud, to Fiesta. And again, we're gonna be talking about that Porch Parade in just a bit, but first, let's start off with Fiesta Fiesta. It is the official way to kick off Fiesta. That is gonna be happening at Hemisphere at six on, excuse me, that happens on Friday at Hemisphere Park, kicking off from four o'clock to 10 o'clock, and KSAT will be broadcasting live during that time. Again, that is Fiesta Fiesta at Hemisphere, but also, more importantly, we are gonna be broadcasting our first ever Fiesta Porch Parade. That happens on Friday. I'm sorry, Fiesta Fiesta kicks off on Thursday, and then the Fiesta Porch Parade kicks off on Friday. And Mark and Stephanie recorded that. It's going to be a lot of fun. Also, so our other main parades are canceled this year, but that's not stopping the Texas Cavalier River Parade, which kicks off Monday at 8 p.m. Fiesta is going to also be broadcasting that parade live as well. Uh, also, Nyosa kicks off Tuesday through Friday next week. There's a lot of things happening for Fiesta, and we're very excited about it. But of course, you can find all of that information right now, ksat.com. All you have to do is go to that Fiesta link. And guys, we're excited to celebrate. We have all of our <laughs> cascarones <laughs> and everything ready. So viva Fiesta. Yeah. Show, show me your you shoes. Sure. Show me your shoes. Oh, really? <laughs> show me your shoes. Okay, show my shoes. Are you wearing show Crocs? <laughs> That's Big okay. The, it's not that bad. Thank God, oh. thank God I'm not wearing Crocs, right? <laughs> That's okay. Hey, uh, Thanks, clarification. Guys. Fiesta Fiesta is tomorrow. Tomorrow. That'd be Thursday. Yes. And then Friday is the porch parade. Friday yeah. is the porch parade. Very yeah. cool. All the princesses wear the, the tennis shoes or cowboy boots, so right. we want to see them all. Or yeah. or Converse. Or Converse. Or yeah. Converse. Yeah. yeah. Right now, 641, about 71 degrees. You can't not see them. Murals like this one all over town, but how often do you know the backstory? Today we launch a new series called If These Walls Could Talk, and we start here on the west side. I'm Katrina Weber. That's coming up. And welcome back. It's about 645. They say a lot, sometimes without a single word. Images painted on walls all over town aim to tell a story. But if murals were a book, they would only be the cover page. Our Katrina Weber gives us a look about the story behind some of them, starting with one mural on the city's west side, part of a new series called If These Walls Could Talk. He was always smiling. Every picture, he would just laugh, and his laugh was off the wall. That ever-present smile of Jennifer C. Fuente's son is on the wall now at West Commerce and Southwest 29th. The painted image of Gabriel Blue Riojas, forever 20 years old, calls attention not only to his death, but the way he lived. People stop by at night, or some friends that he has from out of town, they'll stop by and they like, you know, came by to see him. Cifuente says her oldest child made an unforgettable impression on people everywhere. The Healy Murphy High School graduate knew early on what he wanted to do with his life. One day he was like, I'm cutting hair, I'm cutting hair, can you buy me some clippers? And I was like, I hope you're not messing up these kids' hair. She says it wasn't long before he made a name for himself. At 16, the youngest barber at Guzman's barber shop. Cifuente says people would line up for hours for one of his specialty cuts. He'd cut hair sometimes for the kids from the neighborhood for free. He uh, also uh, won numerous uh, barber battles and contests. In 2015, Gabriel's life was cut short. He was shot by a security guard in a parking lot near Loop 410 in Ingram. His family later won an undisclosed out-of-court settlement. A friend paid him honor by painting the mural. Each one of these images represents something from Gabriel's life. He was one of only a few barbers to still use the straight-edge razor, and the rose and clock are tattoos that he had on his arm. The cardinal just came about because obviously they say cardinals are angels. Cifuente says it's the perfect depiction of Gabriel, one that brings her peace every time she sees it. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News.
Yeah, those murals are definitely one of the things that make San Antonio such a special place. Well, it has definitely been a morning of stalls. So we had a view here at 37 at Jones Avenue where a stalled vehicle looks like it just cleared. Uh, let's take a look here. Traffic is running pretty smoothly right now, but like I said, it has been a morning of stalls. Now this one again was actually right here off 37 northbound at 35. It was causing a little bit of a delay here in those lanes, but thankfully things have looked like they cleared and people can get to where they need to be thankfully safely. Now we have spotted another stall that's still out here. 410 eastbound right at Starcrest. This one hasn't caused a lot of issues, but like we said, this is what we spotted this morning. It's been a lot of stalls. We have seen that some of these stalls have actually caused a lot of delays as well. But again, looks like things are looking pretty good right now. Bringing it back here to 37 at Jones Avenue. Mike, you're saying that people may need to also pack their sunglasses with them. Oh, yeah. And case in point right here. And uh, Yvonne, one of our regulars just took this picture a couple of minutes ago. Beautiful sunrise and well, Comparing to this, obviously the sun rises sooner for Yvonne than it does here in this picture. Uh, beautiful morning, though. A couple of high wispy clouds hanging around out there. Temperatures. These are some of the lowest numbers that we've seen in at least about a week or so with, uh, you know, upper 60s, low 70s. We're actually a little bit below normal right now, although it was still 60, excuse me, 76 at Stinson and the dew point is at 67. These numbers aren't bad either with dew points in the uh, basically 60s around here, which is a little more tolerable when you step outside. All right, going back 12 hours, of course, we had those thunderstorms. They were few and far between, but they just so happened to hit the northwest and west side of San Antonio, 60 mile plus per hour uh, wind gusts were reported out there on the west side of town and those storms continued down to the southwest and then another cell popped up there and did become severe late last night around uh, southeastern Uvalde County. Nothing is showing up right now. Again, we're still talking about what well, it doesn't look like much, but that's what the uh, Hurricane Center and you can see there's a bit of a uh, bit of a circulation here in the Bay of Campeche. Hurricane Center says a pretty good chance that that will become a tropical depression in the next 48 to 72 hours. So uh, today, a couple of scattered showers. Now again, this does kind of a broad brush, but there will be one or two of them out there once again. And I think really the same thing tomorrow, maybe fewer out there. Then we go in toward the weekend and now Friday, Saturday, most all of Saturday uh, is going to be first part of the day rain free. However, as this system and this uh, model just kind of moved that a little further off to the east, but there may actually be one or two of those wraparounds around here on Saturday, and all that's going to continue to work its way off pretty much east of us. Now, this high is the thing that's in control of us right now, and that's what's been taking these little disturbances and throwing them in here and giving us some of those showers and thunderstorms, and that'll pretty much stay in control. And then, of course, like I said, we are watching that low down there in the Gulf of Mexico, which will come close, but pretty much stay further off far enough off to the east of us and again maybe a wraparound shower here or there as far as forecast today 90 at noon mostly sunny skies high temperature today then is going to be up to 95 and a shower or thunderstorm or two is going to be possible then tomorrow same thing again maybe a stray shower or thunderstorm around there 95 on friday saturday a shower, especially off to the east, is going to be uh, possible and will start to warm up a little bit. Slightly lower humidity over the weekend, make it up to 97. That's here in town on Monday. Lower humidity, it'll be a nice little, almost a tease, because it won't last forever. Because you'll be like, oh, yes, yes, this is great. And then it's like, Ugh. We'll take it, a little break. Well, yeah, I mean, yeah. anything's good, but then. Back to reality. I, I don't mind being teased. A little bit. A little bit. Yeah, it keeps things interesting. 651, <laughs> about 72 degrees. And tomorrow on GMSA, if you're looking for something fun to do this summer, San Antonio Public Library has you covered. We're going to tell you about all of the virtual activities for teens. Outside with Live Cam. Take another peek out there as we're starting off your Wednesday morning. We'll update you on the breaking news out of Geneva. Presidents uh, Putin and Biden are sitting down face to face speaking right at this moment. We'll be back. Good morning, everyone. Well, we're keeping a close eye on the road here in San Antonio. Things look like they're pretty much moving pretty smoothly here, but let's go ahead and jump over to our wall and take a look at some of our roads from Trans Guide 35 at Cesar Chavez. Again, traffic moving pretty smoothly, but we have spotted some delays and slowdowns throughout the morning. That seems to be the ongoing theme today. Take a look right here at the slowdown happening here at 1604 Eastbound Mike at Houseman. That's expected as the morning does pick up, but other than that, everything's looking pretty good if you're coming into downtown San Antonio from any of these locations. One last view at Trans Guide. Things running pretty smoothly.
A lot of sunshine out there this morning. Thank you, sir. And a couple of wispy clouds hanging around 71 degrees in town. It's kind of pleasant when you open up the front door and throughout the rest of today, 90 at noon, 95 high temperature, a shower thunderstorm or two is going to be possible. And there is an ozone action day in effect for the metropolitan area and going up in toward Austin. Wow, we're done already. Yeah, yes. went, went quick Time today. Flies me on <laughs> yes, it did. Know, right. Welcome back, Stephen. Thank you. Yes, thanks for joining us. We'll see you back here at nine.